Happy Sunday morning. Happy Sunday morning. Happy Sunday morning, people, people, people. Uh, this is um, Brother Wes and um, at the hospital. Uh, see, I'm a little tired, but um, that's what dads do. Dads be there for the kids, and so I'm here, and I'm grateful and I'm thankful uh, for what God has done, and I'm grateful for my son and him healing my son and continues to heal my son. I'm just grateful for everything. You know, what happens oftentimes um, when you get older, you realize and understand the purpose of life. And the life is about family. Life is about family. It's about your kids. Um, that's what it's about. Blood is thicker than mud. And, you know, as a, as a father, I love all of my kids and I would do anything for my kids. I would die for my kids. I would fight for my kids or whatever it take. You know, I, I lay down my life for my kids. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how I feel. Uh, just to, to bring comfort to my kids. Good morning, Margie. Happy Mother's Day. And also, I would like to say Happy Mother's Day to all the lovely and beautiful mothers out there. Um, and specific to my beautiful and lovely wife, Crystal West. And uh, she's at work, and I'm at the hospital, and she does so much, and she helps me so much. And I, I just want to say to you, uh, baby, I appreciate you. I appreciate what you do. You know, I know sometimes you have other thoughts, and you think maybe you don't do enough, but you do more than enough, and I appreciate it. And today I just want to acknowledge to you and let you know that I do appreciate you, and I do love you. And, you know, the thing about it, one of the reasons I, you know, reasons I, you, you marry your best friend, one of the reasons I married my wife, we decided to get married because I trust her. She, I trust her. She's my friend. You know, I know that she has my back in all things. And so that's why, you know, for those that want to get married one day, you look for your best friend. You marry your best friend. And you marry someone you can trust. It's not about how popular they are. It's not about how much money they got in their pocket. It's not about how lovely or how beautiful, how fine or sexy uh, they are. Because you know what, when you, when, they get, when you get older, all that stuff's gonna drop anyway. It's gonna drop, they're gonna be the same when you're 70 and 80. So, you know, you love the person's heart, you love who they are, not what they have. You know, you don't love the object, you know, but you love the person. And so I think that's what, that's what hurts so many, even uh, couples, even in church, because, you know, it's all about images and, you know, the wife gotta do this and the husband gotta do that. So everybody got a role. And uh, see, but let me talk to somebody right quick. Somebody, a married couple, you don't marry, see, you, you, you don't marry the office, you don't marry the position, but you marry the person. You know, I understand about titles and stuff like that. The woman do this, the wife do that, the husband do that. But before there was a title, there was a person that has a heart, that has feelings, and not everything is conventional. Not everything is textbook. There's some gray areas. And so, you know, that's life. You know, everything is just one, two, three. Sometimes it takes time to get to that point. And so, but you look, you love the person. And you have to remember that. But see, the problem that I noticed in church, and uh, one of the reasons why actually in church the divorce rate is so high is because um, they, 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 they put each other in certain titles, certain roles, and they run in those roles, they function in those roles as a mother, uh, as the first lady, as as the wife and all of that. And the, the, the man looks at the title, look at the person, the object, instead of the person. And they lose sight of that human being because that person hurts. You know, that person, you know, has feelings, she has feelings. You love the person, you don't love the title. You know, uh, just like what I told my wife uh, when she married me, and she was concerned because I was a preacher and a prophet. And I told her, I said, baby, check this out. You ain't marrying the prophet, you marrying Ernest. Just take care of Ernest, take care of the man, and God gonna take care of the rest. And see, that's one of the biggest problems. You know, it's, it's about your relationship, uh, what you have. I mean, outside of church, outside of all of that. See, because there's a difference between church and God, I mean, that's the difference between church and God, you know, a church building, you know. Um, so we have to put things in focus because charity begins at home. You could never forsake your family. 
you know, you never forsake your family for church in the sense of uh, that you forget about your family, that you forget about your family, and you you put church more than more. You pay to pay attention to the church more than you pay attention to your husband. You pay attention uh, to your pastor more than you pay attention to your husband. You pay attention to uh, people in the church, and see what happens is that um, the husband becomes jealous because he feels like he's trying to fight for your love because now you don't put somebody else above the guy that's supposed to be your priest and now he has an issue with that and he has an issue with the pastor because you put him up there and so a lot of times men don't come to church because sometimes uh, the, the women they put their pastor on a pedestal and they put him up even far above their husband and the husband want to deal with that because you know as a man uh, uh, in a man, uh, this is how a man looks in a, to a woman. Um, with me, as an example, with me, with my wife, I'm the best. I'm number one. I'm everything to her. And so, for another man to come up, no. Anytime somebody else try to come up and try to take my spot, no. I'm the one. I'm the man. I'm the one that runs my house. You know, in that sense. You know, and anytime another man, it feels another man feels like uh, that man feels like another man is trying to come in. He has a position with that. And he has a certain disposition with that. And so, you know, use wisdom. Use wisdom. Don't always talk God in church. Just just talk to the person. Talk to that man. Even, even uh, ladies, if, if you are saved and your husband not saved, the Bible says that the, the wife that was saved sanctifies the unsaved husband. So you are covering him and you are protecting him because of your relationship with God. I don't know why I started talking about this, but we need to use wisdom and stop treating people as objects and treat people as humans. Treat people with love and remember the, remember the first love. Remember what brought you together. Remember those things. And if you do that, then you can get that, uh, that spark back. You can get that power back. You can get that love back. You can get that intimacy back. See, it's all about intimacy. It's all about love and connection. When In a relationship, when you spend time with that person, you're spending intimate time with that person. And you're learning about that person. You're learning about the person's ways and all of that. You're getting close to them through spending time, going through the park and, and, and all those kind of things. That's the same way also in God. The more you read your Bible, the more you pray, the more you seek his face, and the more you think about him all the time and meditate on him and just you just on his mind. You, he's on your mind all the time. Then what you're doing, you're, you're being intimate with him. And you know what that means? The more you're intimate with him, the more you reflect him. But I don't know why I'm getting into that. But let's let's pray. Let's pray. I want to pray for, of course, um, uh, Emily. Not Emily, my daughter. But I want to pray for my son, Daniel. He's, uh, he's doing better. Um, he's... Uh, in a wheelchair now he got out of the bed he can get out of the bed now with help of the nurses but he's doing better his arms getting stronger and um, his um, nerves are coming back now check this out with my son initially when things happened uh, when he had the uh, when he uh, had the uh, episode he was he couldn't feel nothing from his his knee below, below his knee all the way to his foot now he can feel things but now that the swelling and the inflammation is going down, he explained what he feels and what he's going through with his body and his feet and his toes because I can touch his toe or his leg and one or two seconds later he can feel it. Or I can rub it then a couple seconds or a couple seconds later he can feel it. If I rub hard a couple seconds later he can feel it in that spot. And so he told me that these nerves, these neural, these nerves that have been released, it's like, he said it's like putting a, uh, having ants in a box. And when you take and you and you turn that box over and drop it on the ground. Now this is my song. This is how my son illustrated what's going on and what he feel. Once you put that box on the ground, those ants are going to scatter and go in different directions. And so that's what that's what kind of what he's uh, experiencing with his nerves. Uh, with his nerves now, it's like his nerves are just shooting and going every way. Sometimes he gets pain here, pain there, uh, and so. That was good that he explained what he was feeling and what he was going through. Um, but anyway, uh, keep us in your prayers. But let's pray. Let's pray. I want to pray for uh, the, uh, those in the hospital. I want to pray for those that are sick. I want to pray for those that are uh, bereaved and bound. I want to pray for um, uh, those that hearts that are broken. I want to pray for the pray for the backslider. I want to pray for the pastor. I want to pray for the apostle, prophet, evangelist, and teacher. I want to pray for everybody uh, 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 that needs prayer. The Bible tells us that man should always pray and not faint. Uh, pray without ceasing. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Uh, effectual. What's effective about it when he's sincere and he's honest? Uh, when he's honest. 
keep your eyes on him. Uh, keep your eyes on him. And for those of you that are in heat and pressure, uh, you at a good place where you can release uh, what's in your heart. And when you release what's in your heart and begin to cry out to him and give him praise and give him a Shabbat. And that Shabbat means what? give God a shout, just like at the walls of Jericho. Now, at the walls of Jericho, they were instructed to walk around one time uh, for six days. But on the seventh day, they walked around seven times. But on that, on that last time, they were instructed before then they were quiet. But when, 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 they, when they followed the instructions of the man of God, and we went around that last time, the man of God said, shout, for God has given you the city. In other words, with this word, Shabbat, what God is telling me to tell you today, whatever you're feeling and all the hurt, the pressure, the pain, and whatever you're feeling, God said that if you begin to scream and yell and give him a shout at the same intensity of what you're feeling, God's going to cause healing to come in your life. God's going to cause that very thing that you're facing, that pressure to be released and be relieved. God's going to give you a release today. God's going to give you a refreshing today. But you must begin to shout and give him praise. See, because God abide and he rests in your praise. He'll sit there and he will not do nothing. He will not do nothing, but he, he's bound to you by your praise and he will, ref, he will perform and he will remove the situation. He will arise and he will stand up as a standard against the thing that is speaking and that's trying to beat you down. Trouble might be beating you down in your mind, in your mind, in your thoughts. Your thoughts, your mind might be tied up because you've been worrying and troubled on every side, but God can bring you out of your trouble because he's a very help in a time of trouble. Don't get in that trouble. Stay out of that trouble. Arise out of that place where you are. Arise out of that pain. Arise out of that confusion for God is skinning you you down in the in the, the valley of dry bones and God is coming down to that valley where you're at and he's speaking to your scattered bones and he's saying to your life that's been scattered to come together. He's speaking to your soul to come together. He's speaking to your pain to come together. He's speaking to your heart to come together. He's speaking to your relationship to come together. God is saying come together. He's speaking speaking to you now. He's speaking with wind. See, his wind is life. His wind is a refreshing. He's refreshing you right now. But his wind also is his water. He's refilling you. He's refilling you. He's renewing you in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray. God, we pray for, first of all, God, we pray for my son. We pray for my son, Daniel. God, I thank you and I'm grateful that you're healing him. Even you're healing him. You're healing him. At, you're healing him like you see fit. You're healing him uh, step by step, God. God, heal him even greater, God. Even today, God, let that be even a greater sign, God. You got him out of that bed and you're causing uh, his, 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 his limbs. You're causing his blood stream. You're causing his nerves to be released and begin to function again. God calls those nerves. See, those nerves, they seem like they're trying to come together. They're scattered right now. God, but I speak to those nerves that are scattered and just shooting up and down, God. God, I speak that those nerves come together, come together in order and begin to function properly, begin to function at the command of the Lord. For you said in your word, God, with us to agree as a touching anything that the act that shall be done, God, and I'm agreeing and I'm touching with your word right now, God. God, you said if I touch an act, you said you would do it. You said that if I decree a thing, that you would hasten to perform it, God. God, perform it right now, God. God, you're causing it. You're speaking into his legs right now, God. God, I speak into his feet right now, God. God, I speak into his heart. All right, God, cut his heart right now. God, I speak to his mind, God. God, touch him right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, raise him up right now in the name of Jesus. And God, for the, that mother, that mother that's on the bed of affliction, God, she's hurt and she's in pain, God. God, I speak to her right now and heal her. But before you heal her, God, give us comfort. God, give us comfort, God, and let her know that she can make it, God. God, those mothers out there, God. Mothers, mothers, God. God, they, 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 they've been loving. They love even God when it feel like it even feel like when when they shouldn't love they love anyway God I speak to every mother today God God encourage them today God I like to encourage every mother to keep standing for your reward is with God God has a reward God reward and God answers faithfulness whatever you're doing keep on doing it because God got your reward God I thank you God for your mothers God now even thank you God for my mother God I was with her God she raised me God and I thank you for the values and things that she put in me God and I honor my mother today. She's not with me. She's with you, God. But I thank you for the time that you gave me with her, God. And God, you told me, God, when you when you took her, you took her, but you left me her sound, God. And I thank you, God, that I'm, I'm fulfilling, God, your purpose, God. And I'm fulfilling my mother's purpose in her heart that she want me to do is to serve you the balance of my days and lift up my voice like a trumpet in Zion. And God, I'm lifting up my voice, God, and I'm going to bless your name, God. I speak to every person. Hearts has been broken, God. God, the good thing about it, God, God, in a place where you said a broken spirit in a contrite heart, you you will
will not despise God. God, for everyone that's hearts has broken, God, mend their hearts back together, God. God, but as you're mending their hearts back together, God, God, put love in their heart again, God. God, put joy in their heart again, God. God, put forgiveness in their heart again, God. God, sweet, sweet spirit of the Holy Ghost, God. God, everyone that's listening to me right now, God. God, send, God, a new anointing in their house, God. God, send a refreshing in their house, God. God, send a new wind in their house right now. God, every rough place, God, make it smooth right now, God. Everything, everyone, every confused place, God. God, bring understanding right now. God, every, every situation, God, in the house, God. God, with us trouble, God. God, with us pain, God. God, God become privileged in that house right now and God calls your glory. God to set in that house right now. God and turn things around. God God for that people and that person. God that are struggling and worrying about and worrying about what how they're going to pay their rent. Worrying about how I'm going to move forward. Worrying about how they live. God you said you never leave the righteous forsaken. God God provide for them right. God don't give them manna for heaven. God God give them a what is this God. God touch them and God meet them. God God meet them like never before. God God meet them. God meet them. God meet their need. In the name of Jesus, God, you said you will supply all of our needs, God, according to your riches and glory, God. Supply it right now, God. God, supply wisdom where there's a lack of wisdom. God, supply joy where there's a lack of joy. God, supply peace where there's a lack of peace. God, supply healing. God, for those that need healing right now, God. God, for everyone that's in their bed right now, even my son. God, I, t I speak to him right now. Take up that bed and walk. Take up that couch and walk. God, send your anointing, God. God, and, and show your miracle, God. God, reveal, God, express, God. God calls your miracle to birth out on this day, God. God, not tomorrow, God. God, but show your hand, God. God, and reveal your glory like never before, God. God, because you're all shoddy, yeah, God. God, you're all sufficient, full breasted, God. God, fill us up again, God. God, renew our strength, God. God, as we're waiting on you, God. God, we're waiting on you, God. God, God we're waiting on a move from you, God. God, we're waiting on a touch from you, God. God, we're waiting, God. Help us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and God bless you. All is well. God bless you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support and your prayers. And uh, God is moving. And God is blessing. And I'm thankful. And again, to all the mothers, happy Mother's Day.